What's up, Machine Heads? It's DJ Lush, a.k.a. The Real Machinist, coming at you here with another music tutorial. This one's going to be on mixing and using your tools, okay? Basically, if you to get a great sound of mix, uh, there's a couple little final steps that I go through, and I'm going to share them with y'all, okay? So the first one here is uh, your, your levels. You're going to want to make sure all your levels are you know about the same okay so I'm gonna flip it over here to mix view that's just shift and view there on your microcontroller and I'm gonna play the song okay okay right here in the yellow you got my saxes here okay as you can see they're about zero decibels up there let me come in with the claps over here with the orange we got them about 0 0.5 okay about one okay now coming in with the percussion here on the green you know there's it's about the same level, you know. You see, everything is just about the same level there on the meters. Okay, that's the first thing. If you have anything that's a little low, maybe maybe you want to tuck some stuff back in the mix. That's fine. But usually, I, I make sure all these meters here are, you know, just about even, straight across the board here. Okay, that's the first thing. I'm gonna go back out of mix view there. Get back over here. Okay, second thing, EQing. You know, I already made an EQ video. Uh, if if you don't know much about EQing or you want to learn more. You can check that out. There's all kinds of different sites um, that I use as far as uh, EQing goes. And basically what that means is uh, you, I go in here like the percussion. Okay, I, I got my kit here. Okay, it's my Lush Hip Hop kit. It's my own little special kit um, that I made here. But basically you're going to want to know your frequencies. Okay, know the, the good frequencies to boost and cut on your kick know the good frequencies to boost and cut on the snare okay i'm gonna make another tutorial that's really in depth about eqing here and uh and you guys will find out if you didn't if you don't already know okay exactly what you should be boosting and cutting here basically the way i feel about boosting and cutting and eqing any of the machine samples i don't do it um i i don't throw in an eq on every single one of these these are already high quality samples that, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in getting the right sound first. You shouldn't have to compress and EQ the hell out of a, a sample that you have. If you have to do that to get it to sound better or sound good, at least, you probably should get a better sample. It's all about using the right source, okay? So I don't do that. I don't put a bunch of EQs on, anything like that. The only thing that I would do is if I go in here, I'm going to go into the sound level here. You know, I, the only thing that I would do maybe on a kick here or something or like a snare is throw on a uh, like a high pass filter or a low pass filter just to cut out some of the frequencies that you don't really even hear at all. And I'll, we'll get into that here when I get into the spectral analyzation. OK, and uh, you can watch my next video here on EQing and that'll all be clear. But so uh, basically EQ, you know, you're going to want everything sounding good first. OK. Uh, second of all, or third of all, sorry, uh, I go into the master section here. Yeah, let's see. Sorry, I got a couple things going on. There we go, master. Okay. Anyways, back at it here. Um, this uh, basically, I, I may EQ the master track. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I just, you know, I throw on an EQ, just boost it up a little bit. You know, here in the low end, boost a little bit of the high end. Uh, that's just the way I usually like it. Okay. You don't have to do that. It's all EQing is all about personal preference, people. But uh, one thing that you must do is throw a limiter on your master track. Throw a limiter on here. Bring it down to negative 0.1 decibels on the threshold. It's going to save you a lot of heartache, and it's going to basically limit your track so it does not clip. Okay, clipping people is digital distortion. It does not sound good. You are not going to want it in your mix. Okay, enough about that. And uh, let's see my where am I here? Okay, fourth uh, fourth point here is uh, I'm gonna get into the spectrum analyzation here, which is something that you know not a lot of people know about. But uh, there's a great great plugin here. It's Voxingo Span. It's a free plugin. It's a spectrum analyzer. You can get it from Voxingo.com. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the video so you guys can get it. It's free, people. F R E E free. If you don't have this plugin, you got to get this plugin, okay? Basically, this is going to tell you exactly where you need to boost or cut, what frequencies live where on anything. You can use this on your individual samples. You can use it on your groups. You can use it on your master, which is basically what I use it on. But, I mean, this is a very important learning tool here. 
you have your 20 hertz all the way up to 20k and i'm gonna go ahead and play this song here i have this on the master level right off the bat you can tell where you're at 2k those horns are sitting fat chilling right in the 2k the claps come in bring up a lot of this high end here in the 10 16 range check it out with the kick there it goes so you got your kick filling up your you know 40 to 100 hertz it's a great tool here people great tool it's going to let you know exactly where you need to be EQing, where you need to be cutting where you need to be boosting all you have to do is throw it on an individual sound play through it see where you're at and then throw an EQ on, make your booster cuts, and you're done. Okay? It's a very important plugin. You're going to want to get that. Okay. And then uh, last, but very not least, um, I want to talk to you guys about is using your sources. If I'm sitting here mixing on my DJ system here, you know, in front of the same speakers all day, your ear's going to get fatigued. Okay? You don't want to do that. You uh, Basically, when it's time to, to come to mix... And, and, and you get everything, you may sound, you know, think these levels are good, you may check the meters, check the spectrum analyzation, everything may look and sound great, okay? What you're going to want to do then is uh, when you think everything's good and you think it's all ready to go, chances are it's probably not, okay? So you wanna, you're going to want to get away from your normal environment that you've been sitting in all day or for hours and just, just get away from it. Go ahead and bounce these audios out here. And I, you know, export the audio here is what I do. You're going to want that on the master output. And then, I mean, have a little folder here, you know, where it goes or whatever. And then I throw them in iTunes. What I do personally, after I export the audio here, I throw it in iTunes. I burn it off onto a CD. I throw it on my iPod. And there, all of a sudden, you have a vast amount of new sources available to go listen to this song. You know, I mean, you know, I know a lot of people that mix in their studio all day and they just have problems left and right. You know, you, you're you going to want to get away. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is you're going to want to get away from your source here. Like, I, the my environment here is perfect. It's perfectly set up. But like, I hear the same thing over and over. So all these tracks that I have mixing, I may think they sound good. Bounce them off onto a CD or an MP3, which is what you're, you know, the normal listener how the normal listener is going to hear your your song and it's a big difference it's a huge difference you know some you'll find out exactly if something's too bassy if something's not bassy enough uh, it, you know if you need the vocals up more you know it's these sources you know are going to let you know that you don't want to be listening to that in a perfect environment where it may sound good and then bounce it off and not even think about it and then you know you're the people that are going to be paying you for the you know the artists that you're mixing for or whoever you know your audience that you're trying to get your tracks out to they're, they're going to have a product that they're unhappy with and what are they going to do with that they're probably not going to listen to it okay so what you're going to want to do is export that audio you're going to burn it off on itunes throw it on a cd take it in your car listen to it on your car stereo that's where a lot of people hear their mixes in their car uh, throw it on your iPod. You know, I use a couple different kinds of headphones that I'll plug into my iPod. Just basically listen to that song. Once you have that MP3 or that WAV file or the CD file, listen to it on every single source that you possibly can. Get a big rough estimate of about what you need with that mix. And then another thing I do is, you know, I'll, I'll bounce off like seven songs, uh, you know, after I've done mixing them. I'll take those songs and I'll I'll just I'll take a little piece of paper and record like okay this is saxy shit, okay. If I listen to that in my car and it was too bassy, I'll make a note too bassy on car stereo. If I listen to it on my iPods, not bassy enough, I'll you know saxy shit, not bassy enough in the iPod. And then that way you can come back, take that information you've just learned, come back and use it and remix and just do this several times until you get a perfect mix. Okay, now I'm about out of time here, people, so I'm going to go ahead and end this. But this has been a little short little mixing tutorial about using your tools. Go ahead and pick up that free Voxingo uh, plug-in and subscribe. Click the link. Like it. Hate it. Do what you got to do. Okay, but uh, I'm going to come at you with some more tutorials here in the next couple weeks or whatnot. So stay tuned. This is DJ Lush, The Real Machinist at YouTube.com.